Okay, this is uh, Jeff W6FCC. I'm going to do a quick demo here of uh, this uh, true TTY program. And I'm operating here on 40 meters. I have it in uh, RIDI mode. And I could push RIDI again, and you'll notice it does RIDI reverse, but I'm going to just go ahead and do RIDI normal here. Now, in there's a mark and a space and one is on 45 baud and one's 2125 and the other's 2295. If you put this in the wrong mode you'll have the mark and the space inverted so that that's a technical detail but you're going to set this till it works but I'm going to put it in the regular ready mode and then I'm running this program here called uh, True TTY and this program is uh, you can get it here from DX Soft www.dxsoft and they also have another program called CWGET but since this is a ready contest today I thought we'd uh, try out this true TTY so as I showed you before I'm in uh, I'm in ready mode and uh, there's pretty good activity here and there so I'm going to change the scope just to see what we're seeing here I'll flip the scope here to uh, fix mode and there's an awful lot of activity here that's very difficult to see individual signals but I know there's a lot of activity uh, well here's a lot, a lot of activity right around here but to spread it out you put this in the center mode and you go with around two and a half kilohertz wide because 170 cycle wide uh, material that's how wide this is is pretty narrow so uh, I can move this up slightly by changing this I can make it 21, see that number down here, 2094. I suppose that I could slide these things to the right ever so slightly, make it 2125. So that's pretty close, 2125, 2295. And then if I tune this in to one of the signals that I see over here, and I'm in the center mode, and as close as I can get to 170 hertz, let me tune this guy in right here. When you click over here, it immediately uh, tunes in. There we go, back over to here. And you can see there, this is I4 CQ, well, he went away, but it was I4 AVG. Okay, so how did I get this to receive? And the reason you can't hear anything here is I have the audio turned down on uh, RSPA1. If I turned that way down, you'd hear, you'd hear what we're tuning in, but I'm more interested right now in showing you how it works. So I'll put this thing over here. Um, so how did I set this up? You go over here to setup and we have several things, like interface, and tuning, and there's a lot of different things you can do with this program. And it'll run other modes, AX25 and other things as well. But we're sending is ready, but you could pick one of these other modes and send and receive in several different modes. It's a pretty nice program. Let's go back to the interface. So these are things you can set up if you uh, want to toy with the radio later, but right now what we want to do is make sure we pick the right source of audio. Oh, I know why. Okay, so I'm listening on V-Audio 3 and that is because when I went over to uh, ICOM Remote it said that the V-Audio was V-Audio 3. Now V-Audio is always active. Regular audio is not, depends on the volume control, but this is where you do most of your recording and playback and this program uses this particular port. And V-Audio 3 is a two-way port. When you transmit the audio goes out V-Audio 3 and that's why it says here output is going to be the same as the input. It doesn't have to be, but in this case it is. Okay, so there we go. Now, how do you tune a signal? As I showed you before, when you go into fix mode, and I've tried to limit it down to 7 to 7150, still an awful lot of activity that's very difficult to see individually. But let's put it in the center mode. And we've narrowed this down to 2.5 KC. Every time I click on this, I get more and more, uh, I get a wider signal. And you notice here that it's, it's pretty hard to distinguish that one from this, but here you can see all of the ready activity. Notice we're decoding it. Oh, finally, VE2PIK, 
I guess number 15. So the other thing you want to change is when you're over here in the remote control is you have these filters and I've set the filter fairly narrow down to a 450 Hertz. Let me turn up the gain here a little bit. And you can kind of hear, I remember I'm here in normal mode here and here I'm using reverse. This one may come back. This is why I like the slow scope. Well that's not bad. And here's the uh, the two signals, the, the mark and the space. Let me widen this out slightly. Got to raise that up to maybe 600 hertz. And this is how you tune that in. Now if you have a lot of signals that you're looking at simultaneously, you can change these numbers, but I want to keep it at the 2125, because that's really the proper frequency for ready. So I'm just clicking on these, and if you, if you can see what I'm doing, as I click on these different frequencies, it's changing the radio. See 7047, or watch this. I just click on this one, down in the waterfall display. 7045, go up here. 7046, 941. These are very close together, as you can see. I could go down in frequency a bit just by just clicking down here. And you notice this is telling me I'm down at the very bottom of the band, 7042. It's kind of getting close to the bottom. So let me click on a few that bring it up in frequency. It went all the way up to, uh, now I go back to this one. There's ways to have it do automatic frequency control and it'll find the strongest signal, etc. There you go. Get this program. Give it a try. Here's where you get it from. Get it from DXSoft. And the price of registering it is uh, not cheap, but don't worry about that till you've tried it out. W6FCC, hope you have fun with this. It's, a, it's an interesting program, and the CWGET program is also really good. Have fun.